Welcome back to another Fido Daily. Uh, the people have spoken and I have listened. I am bringing to you a fresh new off meta pick that you can use to print LP in your games. All right. If you're struggling against champions like Aurelia, like Fizz, like Silas, Yone, any of these sort of Kiana annoying melee assassins mid, this is your answer, okay? This is the magic pick that will solve your problems. It is Varus mid, all right? Radiant Virtue Varus is back for season 14 with a very special build, which we'll be going through um, in the rest of the video. But let's start off with the with the runes first. I think that this will be your rune page always. Whenever you're counterpicking Varus mid against a melee champion or Varus top against a melee champion, you always go PTA um, overheal, I think is the best option because you have Blade of the Rune King first item. You can even get Vam Scepter on your first base. So you'll get that shield really, really early. You want to stack it up. Legend of Alacrity, self-explanatory. Last Stand, I think, is a little bit better than Coop because you do tend to get quite low in Varus, right? The whole point of this champion is that you push your limits. You do unprecedented amounts of damage uh, when you get to very low health and uh, the enemy just doesn't expect it. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, secondary page, always resolve bone plating overgrowth. The only exception is if um, you're versing something like Cassidy, you could go conditioning uh, because he can easily proc your bone plating with his Q. You could also potentially go go demolish um, if it's a very easy lane you think you can get demolish stacks in the tower that's totally fine as well but kind of always going overgrowth and uh, bone plating in most melee matchups the only other exception is you could go this flat HP the condition is guys if the enemy champion you know for a fact is going to run ignite then you go for this HP. So if I'm versing Fizz, I'm always going to take the flat HP rune because I can guarantee that the Fizz is going to run Ignite, right? If I'm versing Katarina, I feel like it's very likely that she runs Ignite. If I'm versing Yone, for example, it's uh, it's actually very likely he goes TP, right? So if you're playing against more split push melee mids, they'll go TP, like the, the, the Yones, the Aurelias, things like that. So um, that's about it for the runes. Now let's quickly run through the items together. Varus, pretty much every single game, you should be rushing uh, Zerkas, right? Because it gives you an, an incredible spike for the amount of money you, you pay. It's very gold efficient. The only alternative is Ninja Tabby against double AD mid jungle and uh, Mercury Treads against double AP. Otherwise, you should pretty much always go Zerkas in, in, in any other case. Your first item will always be Bork. This is infinitely better than Kraken, guys. I can't stress this enough. Kraken, Varus, mid lane or top is just garbage. You know, Bork gives you the same damage Kraken does but it gives you lifesteal right and the lifesteal gives you overheal right so it just it just makes sense with the page to go bork it gives you more burst damage it gives you sustain so that you don't get poked you know every time you try to get get mid prior um, always go with that first now second item is negotiable you can either go terminus or shojin these will always be your first three items it just depends you know has the enemy team built four or five merc tread slash ninja tabbies do the enemy team have two frontline champs you know maybe they have a zax jungle and a Cassante top great then we're just rushing terminus second but maybe their jungler is kha'zix and their top lane is fiora well in that case why don't we just go for spear of shojin to make ourselves more tanky to give us more of this deceptive um, sort of WQ burst damage with three blight stacks. That's what it's all about. This is basically the old Radiant Virtue Varus. If you look at this build, you know, you've got three items. You have Lifesteal. You have pretty much max attack speed. You have Armor Pen, Magic Pen. You have Armor, Bonus Armor, Bonus MR. You have Bonus HP. You're pretty much a tank, an AD carry, a frontline, an engaged champ. You have CC. You tick all the boxes. This is one of the best pub stomp uh, champs in the game because it pretty much maxes out at three items. And what you build next is totally up to you. Do they have a lot of AP? Let's say they have three AP champs. Great. I'm going to grab Kanek Rukan, and maybe I'll grab a Steric's Gage, right? Because I think Steric's Gage is a great item to build on Varus once you have at least two HP items, right? Because then once you get it, um, once you get it last, your shield will be very, very big because it scales with HP. You know, if they have a really fed single champion like Master Yi, for example, they have some Master Yi Smurf with 20 kills, boom, just grab Anathema's Sterex. You know, same thing, Anathema's Sterex, you have this massive shield that one champ can't kill you. Your ult also CCs them for longer. You know, if they have a lot of melee champions and a lot of AP, you can go Abyssal Mask. A lot of your damage is magical, so the aura is very, very good. You know, you could go Abyssal Mask, Force of Nature. Now no AP champ can kill you. So really it's up to you. Whatever items you want to buy, you know, if they have a lot of CC, you can go with Sand Sterex. And uh, even with Merc Treads, now you have like 60% tenacity, you know, nothing can nothing can stun you, you're just permanently kiting and doing damage. So, you know, if they have a Fed 80 carry, go Randuance. You know, if they have uh, um, like a Aurelia, something that, that has benefits a lot from lifesteal, like Aatrox, cool. You can just go, if you're going to be sideline against Aatrox, grab a Thormel. You know, you're going to reduce his uh, healing from this item. Um, if they just have a lot of mixed damage, like mixed bag of everything, they just have 
everything, cool. You just go Jack shows, Jack shows Steric. So I'd say that this is probably the safest build. You can do this in every single game against any types of champions. You will have armor, you will have a mine, you'll have this massive shield, you have magic pen. So with this build, you're pretty much, you can do anything. Um, you, you can split push, you can team fight, you can engage. Um, and that's what this champion's all about. Now let's jump straight into the game, guys, and uh, find out how we can abuse this build. Now uh, we're playing against Aurelia. There's a lot of melee champions, so it's an excellent Varus game. Uh, we do the level one pull, right? We auto attack the range creep, make sure that these minions are different HP, don't allow Aurelia to get three stacks. And every time one of our creeps gets low, we just walk up, we get one auto, and we get the E. That's pretty much your early game pattern. Do not start with your W, start with your E mid lane, and always sort of um, use that E to guarantee the PTA proc. That's what a good trade looks like, guys, where you get the three autos, you get the PTA, and you walk away. You want to end the trade there and go back to stacking your overheal, okay? And uh, feel free to just last hit. Don't feel the need to crash the wave too quickly you can see here how i'm trying to make her pay um, with hp every single time for each creep and that is why you take that e guys that is why we take the e level one because it allows us to get that last auto and uh, proc our pta and uh yeah always grab uh i'd say w second is good because you go you are going to be harassing her under tower and uh you can get a lot of blight stacks purged and just making sure every time the melee champion goes for a creep, you just want to weave in one auto, all right? Because your blight stacks take a very, very long time to actually expire, all right? And uh, if you just weave in one auto here and there, eventually you're going to get to those three stacks. You could actually look for a solo kill. Be willing to move to plays, right? If there's, uh, you know, if there's something happening in the river, if there's a skirmish happening, look for it. And that's a really, really important uh, mechanic there on Varus. Make sure that if you're about to get a kill, I'll actually rewind this because I think this is very, very important. This is what's actually going to get you killed in the early game on Varus. When people are low, I want you guys to not be happy with just getting a recall, all right? When when you see your opponent is low like this, if you let them recall, guess what? This Aurelia has teleport and I've run exhaust because there's a lot of threats in the game. It's fine, but you just can't let this guy leave the lane. If you let this guy reset right now, he TPs back, he comes back full health. Now you're low on resources and uh, you, know, you've, you haven't achieved anything with your lead. So make sure that when they're low, you always sort of, you, you basically have to press W first, and then you have to go for the Q flash. So W, Q flash, and immediately wind up your auto. And that's going to get you the, the solo kill most of the time on Varus. So you see, we've got the auto here, instant E, right? E. And before she can flash away, it's really important, guys, that you, you, you press your W, Q before you auto, because even if she flashes afterwards, your auto is still going to go off and kill her, right? But if you do the auto first, then you try to W, Q. You're in tower range, she flashes away, you're dead, all right? And you look very, very silly, and I have done this many, many a times on Varus, you can see there. And try and also, you know, press WQ in a way that it can follow her flash if she does it in the most basic way, in a straight line. So I think that is a cheese that you have to practice on Varus. You have to be able to get these kills level two if you want to pilot this champion to a high level. Now here, unfortunately, you know, this is one of the reasons why you should always run teleport mid instead of the exhaust. Uh, exhaust is good for the game, but oftentimes if you don't have TP, you get a solo kill like this, you actually end up losing XP. You can see here, I lose a full mid wave, uh, even though we did a nice outplay, a nice flash predict, you know, good spacing, everything, harassment but we're actually down in terms of xp right now even though we're up in gold um that's just part of the game you know that's the risk that you take if you run uh exhaust instead of tp that's all good uh the best the best uh first buy um is vamp scepter i think on varus mid vamp scepter is great um otherwise you should just buy zerkas now in this case we actually had 800 gold so we didn't really have enough to buy anything you know we could go double dagger refillable but because this is not a poke lane it made more sense to just buy a recurve bow and just spend as much as we can on our stats uh, because we know that it really has no flash so probably we'll be fighting we come back into the lane remember guys before you fight the enemy champion always kill a minion on varus always kill a minion and get your passive stacked right get your passive attack speed going now we know because this is a freeze aurelia is going to go on us so in advance, we kind of try to uh, look at our map, see is there any champions near us? Can anybody help us out on this freeze to make sure that we don't die, right? Because if we die on a freeze, she recalls, then our game is kind of completely over. So um, a lot of the time, you know, if you do get frozen on, you can use that as an advantage because if you get a kill on a freeze, you know, it's just 10 times the value, right? As, as if you, you were crashing a wave beforehand. So... Outside of that, here we should have definitely based. I'm not really sure why I'm sticking around. This is a mistake that you got to make sure you don't make on Varus, right? If your wave has already crashed and you've killed your laner, those are the only two conditions. I've killed my laner 
and my, and my my wave has crashed into the tower. If both of those are true, guys, you always should recall. You should recall ASAP, and you will lose the least amount of CS. And most importantly here, the, the big advantage that I lose by not recalling, by recalling so late, is that I'm not going to be able to pull this next wave, right? If I was already here, if I was coming with my wave right now, I could pull this wave, freeze it, and now this flash, this Aurelia that's down 10 billion gold is stuck on this line, right? She's stuck right in front of my tower, and it's so much easier for me to get solo kills. And that's exactly where you want to be on Varus when you don't have sums. You know, you want to be freezing the wave and uh, kind of just you know, your opponent walks up, you just run at them and you kill them. That's uh, pretty straightforward. Um, also, in general, something you need to think about is when you auto attack. So when you cast your E on Varus, you can actually get one auto attack off before the E lands. So you'll get that extra blight stack. So whenever somebody has two blight stacks on them, you want to cast your E first, then auto them, and it will actually proc all three blight stacks um, when when the Hail of Varus actually does. Uh, fall down so that's something nice that you could do you don't have to wait for the full three blight stacks you can just do two into the e combo um outside of that just make sure you last hit again varus is all about either building waves or freezing this is kind of what the champ is about if you want to push the tower on varus you want to build a nice big wave so that you can harass as much as possible don't push single waves on varus that is the worst thing you can do that is the the easiest way to lose on this champion um but yeah, you're just kind of slowly pushing. There's really no rush. There's no urgency. We know that she's going to walk up for the cannon. Uh, we don't try to play too aggressive. That's a really, really important thing. Also, remember, your ultimate can be buffered through CC. Same as your E. Your Q will get interrupted, though. So make sure if you think that you're going to get stunned, if you think that you're going to get knocked up, something like that, you can always cast your E as you're about to get knocked up. The E will still go off. You can cast your ult as you're about to get knocked up. But if you try to cast your Q, it will go on cooldown. Most importantly, if you press WQ and you're charging it as you get cc'd both your w and your q will go on cooldown so it's really really important that you only use your wq when you know absolutely 100 percent you cannot get interrupted and this time around we do the correct thing right also look at this vision line guys it's really important that you you actually recall just outside of the ranged minions vision there right because if we were a little bit closer to aurelia there she would jump on one of the creeps and then she would actually be able to drop you know one or two range creeps to the tower and just run at us she would drop the creeps she would cancel our recall, make us take a bad base, and you know gain a five, CS, five, six CS lead, or be able to get a turn because we're stuck under tower with no mana, with no, with no money spent. So make sure you always recall outside of the range, uh, of the range minions um, uh, vision. And uh, yeah, feel free to use your E under tower. That's what I would say. Your Q is a very long cooldown, and you always need your Q to, to get an all-in, right? It, usually, if you have uh, alt and Q, it doesn't really matter if your E is on cooldown. You'll still be able to kill people. So if you're thinking about what ability should I use under tower to help me last hit, should always be the E, right? We don't we don't put any points in it early, and it's kind of our least important ability. And uh, yeah, I'm basically pinging. You know, I know that. This is very volatile lane. She will always go on me when I'm pushing up like this. So I'm just pinging to my teammates, hey, if somebody can come push up to this bush, I think something might happen, right? And uh, this is something you can always feel free to do as well on Varus, you know, just just all people. If you don't know your limits, you know, the best way to learn your limits is you just all people. Just, just you see the, the guy jumps in for a creep, you just press R, you press your E, make sure that you wait for three blight stacks in between each ability, right? Make sure that you try and uh, maximize your passive damage and just walk into people and kill them. You are so deceptively tanky on Varus. It is crazy. This champion has been broken for so long, but nobody plays him. I'm really not sure why people are tunneled on the, the bot lane Varus, but he's just such a good counter in mid lane to any sort of uh, melee mids and uh, you know you can always go exhaust you can go uh, ghost you can go TP it's really up to you what summoner you, you, you take as long as you play it well as long as you play it uh, to that summoner here for example you know if I didn't have exhaust I wouldn't feel comfortable uh, trying to bait Aurelia in but with Varus again that last stand kicks in your W percentage health missing damage kicks in people think they can kill you from half health when they're full and they just can't you know this champ is just so so over tuned uh, in my opinion if you can pilot him well and the best part about varus is that you don't actually need that many games uh, to uh, to become good at him, right? Like, it's just understanding, okay, how many autos do I need to do to get the max blight stacks? How long do I have to wait for my ult to tick, right? When you ult someone on Varus, it starts generating the blight stacks. So if you proc, you know, if you proc your, your E too early, you're not going to get the full value. It's just simple things like that, really. It's just, which ability should I use first? And the best way to think about it is you should always use your E first because it's the most useless spell. So you just do a couple autos, use your E to get the blight stacks, a couple more autos, use your ult to get the blight stacks. A couple more autos, WQ, they're dead. It's really that simple. Just E, R, Q with autos in between. If you get good at that combo, you don't have to be good at mid lane. 
to play Varus mid. You don't have to be good at top lane to play Varus top. It is a cheat code, okay? You just need to be good at the champion. You don't need to roam anywhere. You don't need to ward anything. You just walk at your laner and you kill him like this from full health. This Aurelia is full health. She has done zero damage to me and she's been one shot. All right, this is why Varus mid is so broken. Okay, and straight away, you know, we took a little bit of damage. Boom, this is why Bork is better than Kraken because we're able to heal up straight away. Okay, and also the slow is really, really nice because you can get that slow for your first auto, get the three autos in, then extend the slow with your E, and the opponent is just permanently movement impaired, you know, permanently movement impaired. And uh, it is really important though, guys, that if you do have a bounty like I do, you know, I'm not sure exactly what it is, four, 500, just don't go, don't flip plays, right? The early game is when you want to flip those 1v1 out plays on Varus. The early game is where you're happy to die one for one. But once you get that big lead, conserve your bounty. I've actually lost a lot of Varus games like this with, you know, 5-0, 6-0, 7-0 leads, uh, where you just die once, you give away that big bounty. And uh, at the end of the day, you are an AD carry, right? You are very squishy, you can be punished, so. Uh, it's a little bit more about patience when you play this champion, but the damage is just insane. You can see that there. I mean, um, and I'm not doing anything. You know, I've just all you have to do is just make sure you don't miss your WQ. That is it. And your E is impossible to miss because it's such a big hitbox, right? And just making sure that you always prep the front minions, right? Prep the front minions with two autos when you play Varus, or sometimes three, depending if you're ahead or behind. Uh, you know, whenever you're recalling, also think about, you know, placing the ward as you're about to finish the base. So you get some value. You could also go for Blue Trinket, right? So if you're about to switch to Blue Trinket, uh, make sure you kind of place that ward in the middle of the lane. Or, um, you know, if you're in a bush, place it in the bush, whatever it is. So just kind of min-max your trinkets if you can. Now, one thing also, guys, is Caulfield's Warhammer is just such a garbage item. It has been nerfed into the ground. So if you can actually buy Pickaxe uh, plus Glowing Mode, it is so much better than Caulfield's, right? Because it gives you 25 AD and 5 haste, whereas Caulfield's only gives you 20 AD and 10 haste. But I feel like early game, that extra 5 AD is actually much nicer nicer um, than the 10 haste, right? Because you really kill people in just one combo and your abilities kind of reset each other, right? Every time you, you land a three blight stack ability, it resets the rest of your spells. So um, ability haste is not that great on Varus. It's, it's, it's okay. It is nice for your ultimate, but for your basic spells, it doesn't make that big of a difference. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much going into Shojin here because we are we are versing some tanky champions, but we've pressed tab and we've seen that look, there's no one's built no no one's got any tank stats, right? No, except for the support, nobody has built any armor items, MR items, and uh, you know once you win your lane this hard, you should try and impact the map on Varus. And here, this is really really important, guys. Always ult if you see a big cluster of enemies, just ult them. All right, just ult them because your ultimate is so broken if it spreads. If it spreads, it immediately roots everybody in the area. It also applies max blight stacks to them. So you can just press your E on three people and expunge nine blight stacks instantly, okay? So in team fights, your goal in Varus isn't to kill one guy, all right? It's just to ult as many people as you can. If you see people are, you know, bunched up, you just ult as many people as you can, and then you focus on killing one guy, right? Because once you get that reset, something that people don't think about is Varus is basically Jinx. When you kill someone, you get a massive attack speed boost uh, for the rest of the fight, right? It's very similar to, to, to Jinx. The only the only downside is you don't get the, uh, the move speed, obviously, but you also get it off creeps uh, to a lesser degree. And uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of your Varus games will look like this. If you pick Varus in a good Varus game, you'll just be able to dominate the lane as long as you don't throw your lead. Don't play too aggressive once you have the advantage. And uh, always make sure, you know, you, you just deny the cannon, right? If you're about to take a tower, make sure the tower takes the cannon first. Now, grief your enemies as well. Feel free to be greedy on Varus. This is, again, the benefit of this build, the benefit of Bork. We can stick around on higher gold counts than we normally would, right? What do we usually say? Recall on 1,000 gold, recall on 1,500 gold. But when we play Varus with Bork, we have overheal you know our abilities don't cost any mana basically because we we only use them when we're actually all inning someone we can just push the wave with our autos you can often greed and take much you know larger resets like 2k 2.5k on varus just because you have the sustain you know the tankiness everything to stay on the map so uh yeah, just a really, really good champ. I think it's a sleeper pick. Uh, next patch, Shojin is getting nerfed. Uh, there is a nerf to Shojin. It's uh, getting a cap on how many stacks you can get per second. And uh, that will definitely affect Varus a little bit, but I think it'll still totally be a viable build. Uh, but certainly if you start playing now, you can, uh, you know, eat it while it's hot, I suppose. And we, we see something's happening on the map again. It's really important. If you're playing Varus, you're running Ghost, you're running Exhaust, Ignite, Barrier, whatever you're running. If you don't have TP or your TP is on cooldown, don't worry about it. I see that a play is happening. 
I'm not going there. You know, I know that by the time I get there, either my teammates are going to be dead or the enemy team is going to be dead. Okay, and there's nothing for me to get. There's no guaranteed gold. And uh, look, if it's unrealistic to get this full tower, make sure you just grab the wave and instantly recall. Don't stick around. Don't give away your bounty to get some meaningless tower. The 600, 700 gold, it's not going to change your game, but giving away a 1k to the enemy certainly will. And uh, yeah, we've got our Shoujo now, so we're incredibly tanky. We feel like there's nothing to get bot side, right? This is important, guys. If you feel like there's no objective on the other side of the map, we also have to remember that if Yon is unlikely to actually push this wave quickly, the punish to roaming like this and putting two people in the same lane is this champion can just take your bot tower, right? He can take the objective bounty. But the thing is, he can't, because based on his information, there is a very, very fed Varus that is missing off the map, and there's only one place he can really logically be. I'm either in this tri-bush bot, or I'm in the bot bush. So the, the, the Yon just doesn't feel comfortable pushing that wave, and that's why I don't get punished for this roam. And uh, yeah, it looks like something might happen here. Jace might, might somebody might go and Jace. Uh, we're also securing the Rift Herald by being here. So we're just kind of channeling our recall. Um, if nothing happens, I'm gonna finish off my recall and go bot lane if I see that Yon's pushing that tower. And uh, if Yon doesn't go bot lane, then we're trying to go for a play here. So if you have nothing to do, then feel free to go to where you think the next play will be around the next objective and uh, just try and contribute uh, to your teammates if the wave is in a really bad spot for you. Uh, but that's about it. You know, the enemy team ends up surrendering. Uh, it's a pretty easy game and we had a lot of impact. So uh, try out this build. I think you'll find similar success with it in, uh, in your games.